in celebration of Sea Sunday. Here's a song I composed in 1953, which was recorded by Peter Kennedy and published on an HMV LP, A Pinch of Salt. It's called The Arbroath Tragedy. Oh, listen while I tell you of the Arbroath Tragedy. Of how six gallant lightfoot men were thrown into the sea On October 27 in the year of 53 And only one brave man was saved in that calamity The night was dark and stormy and the lifeboat standing by And all at once a rocket jumped into the angry sky the Robert Lindsay ventured out to see the reason why But nothing could they find that night, no matter how they try For hours they searched that Tuesday morn until the light of day And not a bit of work it could they find an arbor of fair It's home and not to Toko, but sail as well we may or else we'll never see the shore, they heard the coxswain say. As they came back across the bar, it was an awful sight. The lifeboat overturned them in the sea as black as night. They couldn't reach the shore alive, they struggle as they might. And only our chief Smith was saved upon that dreadful night. Two brothers sank beneath the wave. A father and a son. The barman Thomas had them cleansed to where the bear had gone. And when the boat was washed ashore beneath the morning sun, the coxswain David Bruce was lashed the steering wheel upon. So let's remember all the men who go down to the sea. And all our wives and sweethearts dear, wherever they may be. And working men who give their lives in their necessity. Perfect men who died that night in 1953. I read about the loss of the Arbroath lifeboat, the Robert Lindsay, in the national press in 1953 and decided to write a song about it. I rang the press office of the Royal National Lifeboat Institution and said I was a journalist, true, that I wanted to write a news story about it. Not strictly true, but I wanted to write a ballad in the style of the old broadsides, which were the precursors of our modern newspapers, so not entirely untrue either. From them I got all the details not in the newspaper, the names of those lost, the date, and so on. Using the reporting skills I had learned in my years in journalism, I put the what, where, who, and when in the first verse. I had a tune in my head for it, but didn't know where it came from. But Lloyd said it sounded like a variant of the Banks of Sweet Dundee, a song I'd never heard at that point, so I claimed it as my own composition, though I knew that wasn't strictly true. Fifty years or so later, I was at the Whitby Folk Festival, where I heard a Northumbrian singer perform a song about sheep dipping time. He called it The Dozen of the Hergs. It was as if a time warp had opened up, and I recalled the time when, as an eight-year-old boy evacuated to Barden Mill near the Roman Wall, my Auntie Bessie had taken me to a social where I'd heard a singer perform that very same song. It must have stayed in my memory all those years, until I needed a melody for my ballad. Ewan McCall criticised me for rhyming all the lines in each quatrain, which is fairly unusual. But I quite like it because it's unusual. 